Good evening and welcome to Casting Call, the show where we shine the spotlight on some of the most notable voice actors behind your favorite DCAU characters. Today's episode, Carl Diedrich Bader. Bet you didn't know that Diedrich was his middle name. It's true. You may know his face from Office Space and Napoleon Dynamite. He's Batman, Moon Knight, Zeta, and more. Stick around for some surprising trivia about the life and times of the DCAU voice actor. My name is Zeta. I'm a US government infiltration unit designed to replace and destroy targeted individuals. Destroy? But I don't want to destroy anymore. Sorry. Crime doesn't take dinner breaks, and neither do I. Carl Diedrich Bader was born on Christmas Eve, 1966, in Alexandria, Virginia. His mother was a sculptor and father a diplomat who served as the Assistant Secretary of State for Educational and Cultural Affairs during the Clinton administration. Clinton was the fun one, then came the boring one. They're all boring. Politics ran deep in the family history. And no, I'm not talking about the show Veep, yet. His great-grandfather on his father's side was also mayor of Atlantic City, New Jersey for a few years during the Roaring Twenties. But in the early 70s, Diedrich's father worked for the Ford Foundation in Paris. So the entire Bader family moved from Washington, D.C. to France when Diedrich was only two years old. Yeah, I basically just picked up English and then everybody was speaking French around me. So that was really deeply alienating. And rather than really pick up the language quickly, which I think a lot of smarter kids would have done. All I did was kind of withdraw into my own space. And so I really got into seeing silent movies and watching silent comedy guys. It, that was extremely influential for me. Charlie Chaplin in particular appealed to Bader and inspired his comedic sensibilities and led him to eventually pursue a different career path than his paternal predecessors. Charlie Chaplin had that combination of really great physical comedy, but also a sentiment that really appeals to a kid, you know? And yeah. then I wanted to be an actor. I worked up a little Charlie Chaplin act in my room in our apartment. This is when I was five, so we'd been there for a while. I went to my favorite theater. The film burned, got caught like that. People booed. I went, nobody's gonna boo Charlie Chaplin, is how I pronounced it. And I ran in between the audience and the screen. I started doing my Charlie Chaplin act, and the organ player started playing a little oh, song. Oh, you're done. It was it. You're I was done. Done. It was it. Yeah. And then I did a I did a roll at the end and a big finish, and uh, and the crowd uh, went crazy. How would you like to be a model for a live animation project? It's for a character I'm doing for our website. Oh, you know, a fancy man once asked me to pose for him in his studio in a public restroom. I turned him down. I regretted it ever since. <laughs> he eventually returned to the U.S., back to Alexandria, to attend Groveton High School, but ultimately graduated from T.C. Williams High School before attending college at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts in Winston-Salem. I wanted to be a stage actor. There was an actor I really liked. I went backstage and I said, I'm a young actor. I really want to be a, a classical actor. Do you have any advice for me? And he goes, quit. Wow. I was thunderstruck at that moment because I thought he would be encouraging or something. I don't sure. Know. But then I realized, okay, if I can bounce back from that, from somebody saying, somebody I idolized saying quit, then I can face rejection. Upon graduation, Bader moved to Los Angeles to begin a career as an actor, but he had to get established and pay his dues in other ways first. You've been working for such a long time, and I heard that when you first moved to LA, you went to become an actor. Yeah. You booked a job right here on this studio lot. I was a security guard. Here? Huh? What was it like? like Just did you a help truly terrible job. It's an awful job. Why? That's why I have like a soft spot in my heart for all security guards. Yeah. Like, I just, I love them so much. It's a difficult job. So I worked the night shift, so the graveyard shift, so that I could oh, audition I during the day. And after two weeks, when I got my paycheck, I was like, what? For that? <laughs> Bader began his acting career in 88 with a part on a pilot called Long Arm that eventually aired as a TV movie, as well as The Desert Rats that same year and The Preppy Murder in 89. I was 20 years old when I was cast in my first professional job. I uh, uh, was a cowboy and I had a, a, a star and a hat and guns and I rode a horse and it was awesome. While his guest roles on TV shows put Bader on the map, like Star Trek The Next Generation, in 1989, then Quantum Leap, Cheers, and 21 Jump Street all in 1990, his first gig in animation voiceover wouldn't be until 1996 for Disney's Gargoyles. You want to nail the guy who hurt your friend? Yes, I do. I've been there. I'm still there. Check the point of entry, okay? <laughs> right, Chief. 
I guess I did okay, so he brought me back and introduced me to the other casting directors like Andrea Romano. Mm -hmm. And Andrea Romano has been amazing to my career over the years and, and someone that is a, is a good friend and truly great. It's been a really fun job to have because uh, it's uh, I never know who I'm playing, you know, and the world is really fun and, and uh, when I'm not on camera, it's a, it's a great thing to do. Before he got into DC Comics animation, Bader carved his teeth in voice acting with Disney's Hercules series in 98 as Adonis, including the Zero to Hero movie. It's an ancient war of doom. If we do not heed it, a curse will fall upon our heads. Did my father not give you a generous health care plan last year? I'm sure most major curses are covered. He appeared in 99's Anastasia spinoff, Bartok the Magnificent, as well as all of the other Reindeer, the Pepper Ann series in 2000, and various voices over the years for The Simpsons and King of the Hill. Did you really have to handcuff the children? No, ma'am, I did not. Voiceover was nothing that I ever thought I would get into. My first voiceover job was oh, playing a Scottish guy, and I had just gotten back from Scotland, crazily enough. So my accent was pretty good. He was the main antagonist, ally turned enemy, Warp Dark Matter, in the Buzz Lightyear of Star Command anime series from 2000 to 2001, as well as Targo, Natron, and others. Although I have a feeling we should get right to it, with a focus on 2001's The Zeta Project, a series which spun out of Batman Beyond's episode Zeta, where the character originally debuted as voiced by Gary Cole. When Zeta received his own show, he also got a new voice. Gross! That's a roach, Z! Yes, Periplaneta Americana, the cockroach. Why is it gross? It just is. You should know that. <sighs> Diedrich Bader played Zeta, aka Z, in all episodes of the show, as well as the villainous IU-7 and famous actor Adam Heat in the episode Hicksburg. Go home. Your family doesn't know you've been gone. Tell no one what you've seen. <gasps> Bader's next foray into the DC Universe came in the Batman cartoon from 2006 to 2008, where he portrayed the villains Captain Slash, Number One, and the Shadow Thief. You ain't seen nothing yet. But when that series ended, paving the way for Batman the Brave and the Bold, Bader provided the voice for the Dark Knight himself in all episodes throughout 2008 to 2011, the video game in 2010, and Scooby-Doo and Batman the Brave and the Bold in 2018. There's been a change in the forecast, Penguin. A 100% chance of hard time at Blackgate Prison. Batman is a the greatest role I've ever played, maybe the greatest role, period. I would play it in somebody's, you know, basement. If they just locked me up and said, all right, I want my own Batman. Locking someone up in a basement, huh? Sounds familiar. Well, for my Batman, I just basically did a funny Kevin Conroy. I just listened to Kevin Conroy, who's so amazing as Batman, and, uh, and sort of did just like a variation on that. He's got a great, great voice, and the gravitas is amazing. I'm gonna hit you with the hammers of justice. And when I do, you're gonna feel it. Feel it right in your face. Can somebody bring me an astronaut diaper? <laughs> Throughout the series, Bader also voiced Solomon Grundy, Green Lantern Kilowog, Owlman, Punch, The Musketeer, Lord Deathman, a creepy usher, adult Damian Wayne, Gorilla Boss, Fanboy Ace, as well as Bruce Wayne and Matches Malone, if you want to count them as separate characters. But I'm not sure that's how it works. Tell me down under. Which one's the mask? Which one's the real person? Watch it, lunkhead! You watch it! You nearly stepped on my prisoner! In 2013, Bader appeared in the Superman Unbound DTV as Steve Lombard, as well as DC Nation's various Farm League shorts as Bat Mongoose. That same year, Bader voiced the Green Lantern Guy Gardner in both Green Lantern the Animated Series and the LEGO DC Comics Superheroes Justice League vs. Bizarro League DTV from 2015, where he also played the backwards version Gardner Grant, aka Green Zaro. That's how I roll! Funny enough, Bader's also a Guy Gardner. I have to ask, how did you get into gardening? I see it's all over your Instagram. You know, when you work in show business, you get rejected a lot. Learning how to deal with rejection is part of your process. When I would get a rejection and it really hit me hard, mm -hmm. I would drink about it. Then when I got my garden, I realized if I were to put myself into the garden, sit here, think about what just happened to me, and I give back to the garden, the garden gives me peace. Oh! Do you get it? Because he's a, he's a guy who gardens. Do you get it? Get the joke? 
Guy Gardner. Bader continues to reprise his role of Batman, first in 2014's JLA Adventures Trapped in Time, and again for 2018's Harley Quinn the Anime Series. I'm gonna say something embarrassing here. I didn't have a nemesis until my late 20s. Don't patronize me, father. It's unbecoming. It's true. Batman, he's so beloved. You can't really mess with him that much. And I wouldn't want to anyway. I mean, he's the greatest part. So why would you want to reinvent the wheel? So yeah, you have to honor Batman. That's for sure. From 2016 to 2017, Bader was in Justice League action as Booster Gold, Uthul, and the Hive Master. In fact, this series allowed Bader to improvise much of his dialogue. Yeah, I improvised a lot. They were very open to it. Then I felt bad because the other actors were to improvise too, and they were like, no. So then I stopped, and they were like, no, Diedrich, do. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> we gotta make it a contest. I'm the only one here! It's all for me, baby! I guess it's time to hit it. And most recently, the Superman Red Sun direct-to-video animated movie cast Bader as Lex Luthor in 2020. As I said, Mr. President, I anticipated this. Of course, I understand your concern, but I assure you, the Luthor company has this under control. We'll find out soon enough if he's real. Despite being ingrained in so much superhero media, Bader wasn't much of a comic reader. I wasn't a comic book fan. When I was a kid, I would read uh, the X-Men, but mostly because Storm was super hot. If I brought comics home, my uh, parents would uh, throw them out. I'm the only kid in my family without a PhD, for example, even my extended family. Being the idiot of the family, they just they wanted to keep that stuff away from me as much as possible. My son, however, he is really a comic book fan. When I gave him the action figure of Batman Brave and Bold, and I told him he was the first kid in North America to be holding the action figure, it was like he had ascended to heaven. <laughs> Bader married actress Dulcie Rogers in 1997. They have two children, Dean and Sebastian. Bader's son Sebastian even went as Moon Knight to his first Comic-Con when he was six, so he was very excited when his father portrayed that character in Ultimate Spider-Man. Yes, it's true. Diedrich Bader double dips in both the DC and Marvel superhero universes. He appeared frequently in Ultimate Spider-Man throughout its run from 2013 to 17, as Kraven the Hunter, Man Mouse, a Hydra Soldier, and Moon Knight. As your lunar avatar, it is my solemn duty to defend this city and subdue the villain. But this spider avatar only slows me down. If you're gonna make snarky asides, you should make sure someone's there to hear you first. In fact, Marvel specifically asked Bader to make Moon Knight sound like a crazy Batman, though he didn't think he did a good job in the role. Well, that's just like your opinion, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying so much like that, man. He was also in 2016's Guardians of the Galaxy anime series as Maximus, a character that he reprised for the Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order video game. He was also in the 2018 tangential Marvel show Big Hero 6 The Series, his Bluff Thunder, Felony Carl, and several minor characters. One of his most popular roles was that of Haas Delgado, the spectral exterminator who hunts supernatural monsters, first in Cartoon Network's Grim and Evil in 2002, and he Again for the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy into 2007. That mother load of supernatural terror. Hey, you want a weeder or not? In 2002, Bader appeared in Ice Age as Oscar, Timo Supremo as Dehydro, and as another of his most popular roles in the Lloyd in Space cartoon as Boomer from 01 to 03. Come on, Denver! Get the lead out! Do not cross the bat dag! The rewarding part for me, there's so many rewarding parts. It's fun to act in the voiceover, it's really genuinely fun. It's fun for my kids who are 9 and 11 to be able to watch what I do, um, because if they see Office Space, that would be a lot of spleening. It's also just fun to be around voiceover actors. They're really nice people. I would say 99% of them are fantastic and incredibly talented, and it's fun. Where with on-camera work, it feels like you're working a lot, but when you're here in the voiceover world, it feels like you're playing. This isn't safe. There are cameras out there. We should go before the authorities arrive. Honestly, I was only trying to make a fair profit. I had no idea this would happen. From 2011 to 14, Bader frequently appeared as Hundun in the Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness anime series, and in Gravity Falls as Dundergrind at the same time. Bader was a regular presence in Monsters vs. Aliens as The Missing Link, and Bigfoot in 14's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. From 16 to 2020, Bader provided the voice of Judah Manadog in Bojack Horseman, who was the bearded hipster personal assistant to Bojack's talent agent slash manager, Princess Carolyn. I settled on a 
company dental plan. It's called The Tooth, The Whole Tooth, and Nothing But The Tooth. It seemed comprehensive. In 2017, he appeared in OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes as Cupid. He held a major recurring role in Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure as Stan the Guard from 2017 to 2020. Bader was the voice of Odysseus in Animaniacs 2020 reboot, as well as Kevin Smith's Masters of the Universe Revelation anime series as King Randor and Trapjaw. May he forever bask in the glow of his great reward in Praternia. He appeared frequently in the Scooby-Doo franchise, beyond the aforementioned voice of Batman. Scott! Cousin Freddy! Uh, sorry, Captain McDoon. How about Captain Scott? Split the difference. Looks like those criminals finally got the message. Bader worked on several entries in the masterful Airbud franchise. Yes, you heard me correctly, Susan Eisenberg's favorite film series. It's true, don't ask her or look it up, just trust me. While Bader is certainly a staple voice actor across all sorts of animation, his face is recognizable across live action. I really love voiceover actors, uh, much more than on-camera actors because it's so talent-based, and uh, if you are unpleasant to work with at all, they just fire you. <laughs> his first major movie role was in 1993's The Beverly Hillbillies film. In the initial draft, Jethro was just Jethro, and then once I was cast, they decided we I wanted to do Jethreen as well, the, the twin sister, which was only in, she was only in like 12 episodes. So I go to the wig shop and they uh, sat me down and they, they go, so what kind of wig are you thinking about? And right before they finished talking, I went, Veronica Lake. I couldn't believe like I apparently had thought about this before, Such but somewhere <laughs> deep in my psyche where I didn't realize that. So yeah, that's why Jethreen has that wavy kind of, they went for it every day. The ladies loved it. 1999 saw another one of Bader's most memorable roles in Office Space as Peter's neighbor Lawrence. It would be 2004 that saw Bader in another of his most unforgettable though minor roles, that of Rex, the owner of a Taekwondo dojang in the cult classic Napoleon Dynamite comedy. He eventually reprised the role of Rex for the Napoleon Dynamite animated series in 2012. Every day there's quotes coming at you. Oh, totally. From yeah. these movies. Oh, yeah. I'll be uh, in a parking lot of the uh, grocery store with my kids and uh, some guy will buy and go, uh, hey, two chicks at the same time. Yeah. Go, okay. <laughs> All right. He had a memorable guest appearance in 1991 on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which people still actively recall to this day. Am I alone in this? I didn't know y'all noticed he was white. <laughs> One of his first major roles was as the searcher in Danger Theater in 93. Please, isn't there someone who can help me? Someone needs help, so they call me. That's what I do. I help people who are in trouble. In 95, Bader appeared in Diagnosis Murder and Frasier, and secured a main role on The Drew Carey Show as Oswald Lee Harvey, which he played in 2004, which led to his casting on The Zeta Project. It was because of the time I spent with Dolan's family. I never saw how humans cared for each other before that. Milk and poisonous snakes for their venom and then selling it to the drug companies. This is the best money-making idea we've ever had. <laughs> Why doesn't everybody do this? Don't you know by now? People are stupid. <laughs> He had a guest role on Two and a Half Men in 2014, which also saw the start of Bader's time on HBO's political comedy Veep, as communications specialist Bill Erickson. Veep changed my life. I had gotten to a point where all that I was offered were these really broad roles. I was, for lack of a better way to put it, sick of being me. Veep came along, and I did one guest star spot. At the end of the scene, Julia patted me on the shoulder and went, good job. And I said, well, thanks. And then the cameraman went, hey. You're coming back. When I was working on Veep, um, with when I was sitting next to Hugh Laurie, because I was such a huge Hugh Laurie fan, and we were having scenes together, and I just kept thinking, somebody's gonna come in here and go, you're really not supposed to be here. Yeah. And I would go, you're right, thank God. In 2016, Bader began his long run on American Housewife, his beloved TV husband and father, Greg Otto, throughout 103 episodes until the show's end in 2021. Bader was in the indie film Phoenix, Oregon, released online in 2020, as the horrible boss of the protagonist who just wants to create comic books, but he's stuck at a dead-end job. 
Bader also holds a recurring role on Better Things as the best friend Rich from 2016 to the present at the time of this recording. He appeared in Netflix's Space Force as General Wrongly in several episodes. Of course, being booked for so many recurring roles comes with sacrifices. Sleep, for one thing. I did have one day that was a little bit crazy because we shot American Housewife for 12 hours. I drove to Better Things in Altadena, shot through the night, went oh, to wow. Beep in the morning, oh, wow. and then oh. went to American Housewife in the afternoon. Ooh. So I had worked Whoa. straight for 30 hours, wow. 36 hours, what? something like that. But did you, in a weird way, did you think it was mind? cool? It was awesome! That's what right. I would think. That's yeah. all I ever wanted was right. exactly right. what I have right. right now. Bader was also featured in the voice acting doc, I Know That Voice, which showcased several other DCAU talents like Clancy Brown, who I plan to do a casting call episode on pretty soon, as well as Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill, who both already have episodes, so go watch them. You gotta watch this. What's the name of it? Oh, I think I'll have some more martini. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people have gotten into it to try to be a star. Uh, you've got to think about it as a craft uh, that you approach and you have to, like every other craftsman, you have to take your time about learning the craft itself. The sheriff, he may be hurt. Still think you're an actor? Well, you're not that good! <sighs> I'm sorry, man. What roles from Diedrich Bader's career did we leave out that you love? And what's your favorite character that Bader has played? Comment below. You know how to do it. Thanks for watching. Let us know a voice actress from the DCAU that you would like to see featured in upcoming episodes of Casting Call here at the Watchtower Database. That was fun. Haven't done one of those in a while. Okay, now Ted, contact the NSA. Have them trace this line. Find us. Nice try. Do we really have to keep doing Zeta Project videos back to back? I mean, I know people comment all the time to do Zeta videos, but this is kind of ridiculous. The videos will continue and you will keep your protesting to a minimum. And Jake. Yes, sir? That little stunt you pulled on Skype puts you on thin ice. You are on martini duty now. Yes, sir. I call this a Jake teeny. Jake? I swear I will kill you. No, that's okay. I'm more of a red wine guy anyway. Uh, so, DCAU Robotics, huh? What was that supposed to mean? I was hoping you might be able to enlighten us, James. Me? Fan theory videos are one of your specialties. The Wonder Woman time loop, the Joker killing the Waynes, Lex Luthor from Gods and Monsters being the DCAU's Metron. These are all masterpieces. Tell us about how the Zeta project connects to robotics technology of the past. All right, I think I got this. I like robots, I like theories, I like people giving me attention. But first, if you are going on camera, you will need this. <sighs> No way. The only existing official Zeta Project t-shirt design? Well, that's not fair. How come he gets the... <gasps> I can die happy. I can die so, so happy. And you just might. If we don't get this show on the road. Today, I want to show you one of the darkest secrets of the entire DC animated universe. Do you want to see the Zeta Project come back for more episodes and get a proper conclusion? Or maybe you just have fond memories of the show from when you were a kid? Send us your Zeta Project positivity by sharing a 30 to 60 second selfie video on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok with the hashtag BringBackZeta now through November 27th for a chance to be featured in the Zeta Month finale. Go! Go!